Mr. Bads. All right. Time for the Sicilian. C3, attack the Epon. That's the way we do it. That's the way we do it. No E6, none of that. Don't let him get that center with the two pawns. Attack the Epon. Bring the knight. I don't know what that move is all about. C3 and then C4? Seems bad. E6 next. E4 takes, takes, knight takes E5. Okay, but now we have even knight E6. Okay, I think I'm recalibrating here. Let's go like this. Maybe g5 was a fun move there. Try to play g4. Not crazy, but... Bishop g7, keep it simple. So yeah, on c4, I like to go knight c7. You can go knight b6, but... The prospects for the knight on b6 are pretty bleak. I prefer knight on c7. So here, there's knight there. It doesn't do much. I am eventually going to play d6. Question is, do we do it right now? And I think the answer might be yes. E6, takes, takes. I'm going to castle. So if he castles, I'll castle. Actually, I'll castle anyway, because now we want to get the rook to e8. And we want to play d5. And then I'm going to enjoy my extra pawn. Okay. Knight c7 is not worth it. Let's try to undouble our pawns here. We have that extra pawn from way back when, early on in the game. Okay. Bishop here, probably put my queen somewhere safe. Now with my rook defended, I definitely am threatening all these knight moves. It's finally time to relocate. This looks like the one. It's just out of harm's way. E6 was covered. Let's go knight c5. Queen here. We have bishop f5. Happy to trade with you. Queen c2, bishop f5. Queen can't go there. Can take here. I will have the two bishops, but that was uh, probably the one. Let's keep pushing. Open up this bishop. Okay, he's hanging his rook. Technically, if I wasn't scared, I'd take that. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Uh-oh, right here. This looks like a checkmate angle. This looks like a checkmate angle. The Alapin goes down. No matter what your rating is, it will always bring me immense pleasure to, to beat the Alapin. Important. In the timeout of they play Z3, always attack the pawn. And for me, always attack with the knight. If they happen to do it on the next move, same thing. Same thing. And then D6 knight there. C4, though, is a unique move. Um, retreat the knight, and then we're doing just fine there. Ikaru Nakamurmura. We're playing Hickey. Okay, let's stick with the theme here. It's fine. We'll play Queen C7. Six.
Mm, he's definitely giving me more reason to think of d5. I guess he'll react with d4. But okay, we'll leave it for now. We'll stay time out of uh, territory with this move. Now, because he only because he's got his aft pawn up, um, you know, if I play this move, he would go e5 and wouldn't exactly have a great uh, square available. So that's why I'm going to play d6. But if his aft pawn was back there, I don't think I would give it the time of day. So my pawn's uh, just there to prevent e5. But if his pawn was on f2, he'd never be threatening this, so there would be no need. So this is a reaction to that move mainly. But remember, we're also not playing a regular Sicilian here. This is not an open Sicilian with pawn to d4. This is a closed Sicilian where he hasn't even played that move, so. Okay, e5 would cover all the knight's squares. But Taken looks pretty tempting as well. We'll go e5. I actually uh, don't mind taking, opening up this bishop, but I'd rather play against his knight here. Take away those squares. Looking to open everything up. Takes, and he's actually hanging a pawn here, but after he takes, what I'm more focused on is bringing the rook here. Bishop d3, c4. The d file is mine to operate on. I'm threatening to win the queen with knight f3. Time out of is a safe opening, chicken pants. Yep. You can definitely do, feel free to develop all your pieces. And especially here, it was a completely closed position. But again, remember, this is not a regular Sicilian where they play d4 and you take. That's an open position. This is a closed position. Wow, I was going to play knight f3 anyway. All you did was give me a piece. So this is a closed Sicilian. Literally four pawns like that. So the king will feel even safer than it normally does. Okay, attack this, bishop e3, knight g4. But yes, in general, the timeout is a very safe opening. You can feel comfortable not castling. c4 and bishop c5. That just looks like Free material, and there you go. And there you go. So yeah, when white has these moves in the opening, you either, when you play knight f6, after e5, you have to be able to move safely to d5 or e4, or you should play d6 before you do that. That's just how it is. And that will pretty much be the same even if it was an open position, but especially when they don't play d4, no point in me going here, and then this happens, and it's like, okay, what am I doing? I'm just literally going back to g8, right? So, I'm doing this before knight f6, so I can come here safely. And now, if he ever plays e5, first of all, it's hanging, but also my knight has the d7 square if I ever need to retreat, which it didn't have before. All right, we'll start with c4. In our timeout, I've set up with the white pieces here as well. Technically attacking a pawn, so maybe rookie eight. Yeah, here <laughs> I really am thinking about taking this rookie eight, followed by d4 by uh, my opponent is actually pretty tricky. So I'm gonna take here. If knight takes, I will take the pawn. Queen takes. Let's do this. Not interested in your pawn, brah.
That is a hanging pawn, so the knight probably has to develop. Okay, just like I mentioned last time, if e4, I do have a square that I can move to with my knight. Plus, it'll be now opening this diagonal, so I don't think he wants to do that. Or at least, I would be happy with it. We can move the knight, or start with the bishop. I think I'm going to do this one first. Yeah, now it's just a fork. I mean, it has to go there or there. We're going to take this. Bad things could happen to good people here. At this point, he's just handing me pieces. He's handing them to me. We did get a yeah, 10 man off setup here. And I'm comfortable playing this because if e4, then I have some safe squares uh, in the center. If my reaction to this had to be knight g1, then I probably would have played d3 first. And d3 is a good move here. There's nothing wrong with d3 knight there, bishop e2 castle. This is a very solid move. That was indeed a quick one. All right. Okay, b4, b5 we're taking. So here, for example, this is not a threat. So I'm definitely going to feel comfortable playing this. Move. Bishop g4 and bishop e2 would be great here. But another thing that I've mentioned is I'm actually not scared of these double pawns. He doesn't want to take, makes sense. At some point, he's probably going to go bishop there. And I will respond with d3 in that event. Let's bring the rook uh, where it pretty much always goes in this opening. And here d4 or d3 would be the, the two moves. I'm going to go d3. It's the more standard. Knight d5, if he takes, he's going to lose a pawn there. Okay, bishop back. Knight takes here now is on my mind. Is it, it's going to ruin the pawn structure around his king. Knight takes e5, looks good because of this, but knight takes e5, rook takes e5, strong move. Bishop takes e5, bishop takes e2. I'd have to go bishop f6, bishop takes. Ooh, that's a weird one. It's three pieces for two rooks. Not my favorite imbalance, but I might give it a try. He can also go here. But the two bishops should do work in that position. Oh, he was supposed to take. Oops. Oops. Okay, we want to go queen here, bishop here. Like, it'd be great if he didn't play this move, put it that way. All right, he's done it, the mad lad. He's actually done it. On push, I think we keep going. D5 is a pretty strong move. So again, he kind of has to play this, but still he's fighting here. D5 takes, takes, looks pretty good. Probably gonna do it. 
Queen takes. It's pretty close. Do I have much better than that? This is a strong move here. <laughs> That's a strong move. I'll go for it. Oh. I mean, we can take with the, uh, the rook, but it just looks like more fun. Just keep the bishop. There's no rook e8 either. Let's just push. It's really unpleasant. He doesn't have rook e8. He's probably going to play it anyway. Understandable. just had to play bishop takes bishop. Bishop takes bishop was uh, still a move there. But okay, look, we got to see the uh, setup. Imagine that this were colors reversed. This would be a closed Sicilian by white without f4. So I'm saving d3 until later because there's so many other useful moves to do. But eventually, yeah, don't mind playing d3. And then I might go knight d2, knight e4, knight d5. It's all about controlling these two squares in the center. And maybe queen b3 and like some queenside push as well. There's nothing else going on. Like if he doesn't break in the center, there's nothing that really bothers me in this position. Chicken pants, here we go, buddy. Oh! A3. Interesting. A3, all right, I'll 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 fall for it. Like, let me just see. So what happens if I take? What's the big idea? C3, you wanna play D4, got it. Now, I'm actually gonna put the bishop all the way back. Okay, is this, uh, is this a thing? I'm gonna put this knight on a5, I think. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I'll go here. This looks suspicious. It's probably queen h5. What? I'm gonna need uh, I'm gonna need a compass. The follow up is bishop a3? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. G4. It's good, it's good. Takes queen e6, king f8. Like, I get it. You want to play energetic, but at some point, you're running out of pieces, right? Also, after this, what am I saying? I could go queen f7 if I want to. But no, let's make a point. I want to win all your pieces. I don't trust you. Keep in mind, queen d7 trades the queens by force. So this is currently the biggest threat on the chessboard. <laughs> queen d7. Nasty. Okay, we 
got to take this. Bring the king. Guard the pawn, and we'll bring our knight here to guard our knight. And from there, knight d8, knight d6, and we should be fine. We're up two pieces here. Let's not forget that. Two pieces. Okay, GG. I mean, I don't know what that opening is all about, but okay. A3. Probably not the smartest to accept the gambit as well. I'm sure I didn't have a great position, but hey, I'm a sucker for a pawn. What can I say? So this is an example where I want to make sure. So for example, here, chicken pants, you listening, bud? Because this is here and there's no open Sicilian, when I play knight f3, I want to be careful of e4. In this case, I have a square I can go to right there. So I don't need to play d3. But d3 is very much on the horizon for me. It's That move is happening soon. Okay. But for now, I have knight d4, so I'm not worried. But d3 is uh, on my mind. Okay. Now, honestly, it's probably d4 on my mind. And this is because he's just gone here. So now I'm going to go here. Update this. Okay, after this, without a ton of thought, I'm going to play d5. Because I know for a fact I need to open the position up. d5, if it takes, I would have taken the bishop and then taken the knight with check. If everybody took, I would take and it would be check at the end. Here, there's knight takes, um, knight takes here, which might be sufficient. Also, of course, takes back. Yeah, knight takes here looks good because pawn takes, I think I have knight b5. Or knight takes e4, what am I saying? <laughs> ah, both moves are very good. Goes back. Pawn takes is the next move. So the queen has to watch this pawn. Um, but next move is this, and then we'll have pressure here, here. Yeah, and everything is, everything is gonna be threatened here all at once. Ouch. <laughs> this is a big fork. A big old fork. I'm gonna take this one. Both of them win a full rook. It's a, kind of a matter of taste. <laughs> Which one you want to win? Night, night before is kind of irrelevant. It can happen, but the initiative is going to be with me. Okay, this is being hit. Bishop H5 is threatened. It's not quite mate because he has King H7. But it was definitely a threat there. Save our bishop. And yeah, knight takes e4 looks like a big time move. Knight c7 can be taken. Knight f6 will be trading like crazy. Rook takes. Rook takes. That helps. That helps a lot.
Knight c3 or knight b2 can just be taken. That move is not possible. My life should be a lot easier now. Did we get much of a time on all that of this one? A little bit. The main thing is, you know, if e4 was scary to me, let's say this pawn was on c5, then I would probably play d3 here, or I would do so before moving my knight. But bishop e2, castle, rook c1, we kept with the setup. And yeah, pretty important here to just go for d5. Like, knight d2 is a great move, but I see my opponent going for a kingside attack. The king is still in the middle. Time to bust things wide open. This is not something that needs a full calculation because it's like, you know that at the end of this, you just have a normal position. And there might be something more accurate. Maybe knight takes to go for the f5 pawn, you know? Might be slightly better moves there. But even the most basic calculation should be good. We're at 16.69. Nice. Let's get uh, let's get the opening going. Okay, we see those two moves. Those are familiar, aren't they? A4, B4 is uh, just an immediate response. Knight F6, then we'll see E5, and then at least I have uh, this square, for example, to retreat to. So we'll go here. I'm threatening to take the pawn, which my opponent's just not picking up on. Not picking up on at all. Eggs. So every, basically every move I've done has been in stride. Castling. Now I think we just take a free pawn. And c4. Here it's true there's uh, bishop b7. So perhaps we need to watch out just a tad. I think white playing b3 has been slightly annoying for the last couple moves. I'll just go ahead and do this. Not the best, but the simplest to calculate. Here, bishop a6, still some work. I think bishop d4 is... Uh, needed here. I think we'll be up two pawns in the end. Ooh. That's helpful for me. Yeah, white needed to just go ahead and take. And d2, d1 should be getting me something. Gotta go bishop d1. Hopefully he realizes that. So we got a pawn all the way up the board. He can take that. We'll take this.
And at this point, with an escape square, the idea should be that... Oh, that's a... Uh... That's a big blunder. I was gonna say the idea should be that his bishop is just tied down on d1 and we proceed from there. We're getting a lot of closed Sicilians. Not a lot of people just playing e4, knight f3, d4, like the regular open Sicilian. Well, actually, the thing is about a3 is that it doesn't really have anything to do with the time animal. So if you play the Sicilian at all, you have to deal with a3. Let's play d3. Uh, this is actually a situation where I should probably have d3, but for a different reason. Just that although it was hanging, he had my, uh, my rook in his line of sight. But all these moves should look kind of familiar. Rook c1. Knight d5, I'm always uh, ready to play because you know, if he takes, then the c7 pawn hangs. So this always feels good. Rook d7. Queen takes. Knight c8, probably queen a5. I'd say probably because it's the only move. <laughs> Bishop takes uh, here. Queen takes a6, looks fine. Looking at this, which. Uh, Might scare some people, but not me. Not me. Eggs, 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 and I take the queen. It looks like it should work for him because he's attacking more things with Jack, but I think I'm all right here. Rook c8 is one of these moves where it's like, if you're stupid, then it works. But rook c8, king g7 does absolutely nothing. Let's bring our queen over here. This check would be very poorly timed right now. And we're up so many pawns, I can truly take any pawn structure. Yeah, I'm just happy I wasn't playing you, AG. That's what I'm happy about. I'll take this pawn structure. Oh, now you have to trade queens. I'm glad I wasn't playing you, AG. That would have hurt. A queen trade is tantamount to resignation here. Whenever um, people get uh, upset, it happens every so often. In uh, while I'm doing a series or a speed run or something, I realize that like uh, it's kind of like those TV shows where 
the person has legitimately had the craziest thing happen to them and then when they're explaining it to someone else they're telling the truth and you know they are because you've watched the show and you've seen it happen but then they're like yeah and then this bird flew by and, and took my briefcase and so that's why i don't have the report for you and you feel bad for them because you know that as they're explaining something they sound like a complete lunatic but they're telling the truth so you you kind of feel bad you're like man that you just sound like an idiot right now and the same i get the same experience when people are like a little bit upset during the speed runs they're like screw you man engine abuser you know trash player blah 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 and then the way i type i'm like hey man sorry about that i'm a grandmaster by the way you'll get your rating back and as i'm typing that i'm like <laughs> that's what a fucking trash engine user would type too <laughs> that's the same thing they would type <laughs> sorry buddy i'm a grandmaster you'll get your rating back wink wink <laughs> like when i get banned <laughs> so <laughs> Whenever I type that, I'm like, man, that doesn't sound too good for me, does it? My opponent had some choice words for me. He called me a specific word and I replied, sorry, my friend, I'm a GM. <laughs> it's like, now, 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 you may be describing me perfectly, but I'm a GM, so it's okay. <laughs>